My husband owes a lot of money to some dangerous people. But what I did not expect them to do was lie to me about it. What I did not expect them to do was sell my late mother's jewelry so he could fund his little gambling trip to try to get the money back to pay those guys back. When I tell you what else he did, you might just lose your marbles like I did. For starters, this is an absolute throwaway account because I don't want anything connected to me. I just want to get your opinion. Let me give a bit of context first. I'm 33 and I've always had a close relationship with my mom. My father passed away when I was very young and my mother never remarried. So it's always been her and me. My mother was from a wealthy family, the generational wealth type of family, but she had always been a hard worker, a trait I had inherited from her. However, my mother was not happy when I decided to marry my husband Brad. She felt that he was an opportunist, and she also hated the way that he would talk to me at times. I've always been aware of how Brad would sometimes talk to me, but I've always defended and justified his behavior. I mean, his mother has been a teen mom, and he never had a stable father figure in his life. Brad, he wasn't all that bad. He did have a sweet side to him that no one but me saw. Even my best friend Janice has never liked him, but I felt that's because she was always overprotective of me. Anyways, let me not bore you guys with too much detail. Unfortunately, my mother was diagnosed with a dreadful illness. It wasn't easy watching my mother go through such horrible pain, but I was just glad that I got to spend time with her. My mother then decided that she did not want to continue with the treatment. She told me that it was draining her mentality, emotionally and physically. At first, I fought with her about her decision. I just could not understand why she wanted to stop the treatment. It got to the point where she asked certain family members to talk to me, but that didn't work. I just could not imagine my life without my mom. I eventually accepted her decision to stop treatment and decided to make her a last days on earth memorable. It didn't take long for my mother to succumb to her illness after stopping treatment. My best friend tried her best to comfort me since my husband was nowhere to be found when I got the news my mother had passed. I received absolutely no support or comfort from my husband after my mom went. He acted like everything was still normal and not like I just lost my mom. But what was I expecting, you know? Things were not going well in our marriage before my mother passed away, but now things felt even worse. Some days he would come home late despite knocking off from work at 5. Weekends, oh, they were dreadful. He would sleep out and leave me worried sick about his well-being, and I tried to talk to my mother-in-law Claudia about his behavior, but she just brushed me off and tells me that I was being obnoxious and clingy. Life has not been easy since losing my mom. Some days it's so hard for me to get out of bed and continue with life, but I know my mother would want me to stop living. Never. She wants me to continue on. Before she passed away, she had told me to continue living my life with joy and gratitude, which I planned on doing, but right now, it was just hard. You know, especially because I was not receiving any support from my husband. I ended up planning my mother's funeral with just my family. Her funeral was absolutely beautiful, though. It showcased how loved and well-respected she was by our community. After the funeral had passed, I found out that I had inherited my mother's jewelry collection. My mother loved jewelry, especially unique gem pieces. When I showed my husband the jewelry, he immediately suggested that we sell it and use the money to buy a new house. His suggestion caught me off guard because we weren't exactly on good terms. He then mentioned the fact that we needed more space because we were planning to have children. I found it a bit odd that he had mentioned kids because we had not touched on that topic for over two years but it made me a bit happy to hear him mention such. He then explained to me that he wasn't getting any younger, and the fact that he was now closer to 50 with no kids was depressing him. I told him that I would sleep on it and let him know the next day where my mind was at, you know, with the whole idea. It definitely was not going to be an easy decision to make because the jewelry, it has way too much sentimental value for me, if I'm being completely honest with you. However, once I got properly up and thought about it, I told him that I was simply not comfortable or willing to sell the jewelry. The conversation immediately turned into a heated argument. During the argument, I suggested selling my mother's old apartment instead. 
He told me that it would take months for us to sell the apartment, and I assured him that it would not, because I would personally sell it myself. I mean, I'm a real estate agent, one of the best in the city, if I can say that. Despite all my efforts, Brad was still adamant about selling my jewelry. I just kept telling him that I was not going to sell it. We continued to argue for about an hour, and once he saw that I was not budging or changing my mind, he stormed out of the house and yelled that I should not bother him until I was ready to agree to sell the jewelry. I won't lie, after he stormed out, I felt very conflicted. It felt like this argument was adding more turmoil to the issue we already had at hand, and I really wanted us to just be in a place of peace, something we have not had in a very long time, and I wondered if selling the jewelry was the way to do that. Strangely enough, a few hours later, my mother-in-law came by our apartment with a suitcase. She told me that she uh, wanted to be here to comfort me and help out whenever she could because losing a parent was not easy, especially because my mother and I had been close. She then confided in me, telling me about how no one comforted her or was there for her when she lost her mother at a young age. She tells me that she did not want me to go through that. You know, at that point, I was a bit taken back by my mother-in-law's kindness, but I decided to just embrace it. There was already enough conflict between Brad and I, and we hugged, and I thanked her for being so kind and genuine. When Brad came back home, he found us talking and looked shocked to see his mother, but once I explained the reason for her stay, he warmed up to the idea. He knew that we did not get along very well, hence the shock. Who would have thought that my mother-in-law and I would actually spend time together? I loved seeing this sweet, genuine side of her, and it felt like she was going to fill the void that my mother had left. Yes, no one could ever replace my mom, but at least I still had a mother-in-law who could maybe ease the void. While I'm relieved by this. On the other hand, I'm very conflicted about selling my mom's jewelry. Maybe selling it might help ease the conflict between my husband and me. I don't know. I'm not saying that it would fix all of our issues, but rather point us in the right direction. But then again, that jewelry has sentimental value. Should I really sell it to just fix my marriage? I'm confused about it and could use some suggestions, so guys, let me know. What should I do? What's up, everybody? Mr. Renato here. I hope you're enjoying your day so far. Oh, man, I can't believe OP is going to sell the sentimental jewelry. Let me know what you guys would do if you found yourself in this position. Do you sell the jewelry or do you say, you know what? I'm not selling it. Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you guys are having a blast with this one. Make sure you subscribe for daily videos. And, well, let's just jump into the first update, shall we? Updates number one. The past week has been such a roller coaster of emotions, and I've been a mess. I wish I had listened to my intuition because it's never been wrong, but against my better judgment. I completely ignored it and was now paying for it. My mother-in-law, Claudia, has been with us for a week and she offered to take me out for dinner because things were still tense and heated between Brad and me. Oh, he was not talking to me at all and I thought he would have been over the whole jewelry situation by now, but he simply wasn't. Just as Claudia and I were about to head for dinner, I noticed a strange man lurking around our street. Something was just off about him, I can't place it, and when I mentioned it to her, she brushed it off and told me I'm just imagining things. Anyways, dinner was fun. Up until I saw the same strange man again, I saw him when I went to freshen up in the bathroom. I thought that maybe it was a coincidence, but something did not sit right. While we were in the Uber on the way back home, I was trying to access my banking app, but it kept informing me that my account had been blocked and to call my bank which I found strange, but decided I would deal with it later. We got home, and I decided to check on my mother's jewelry. There was this classy, beautiful necklace that I wanted to wear for work the next day. But to my shock, when I opened the jewelry box, there was absolutely nothing inside. All the jewelry was gone. I started panicking and immediately rushed downstairs. I found Brad talking to Claudia, and he was drunk as a skunk. I told them that my mother's jewelry was gone, and in the moment, my selfish, lousy husband drunkenly admitted to having stolen the jewelry and sold it. My whole world shattered upon my eyes. 
He then confessed that his mother had orchestrated the whole thing. He told me that he had no choice and that he was in a serious trouble. His mother slapped him and yelled that he should shut up. I was boiling with anger, but my heart was also breaking into these tiny little pieces. I could not understand why he had done this to me. After everything that I've been through, I kept asking who he sold the jewelry to, but Brad was too drunk to even give me a proper answer. I then asked Claudia if she knew who had sold the jewelry to, and she just shrugged her shoulders. I knew from my own sanity that I had to remove myself from the situation. I rushed upstairs and packed an overnight bag because I didn't want to do something that I would either regret or land me in jail. Brad followed me and tried to talk to me, but I was too angry or even, you know, too mad to entertain the conversation. Claudia kept yelling that he should shut up and not expose anything. I left and drove to my best friend, Janice's house. I immediately broke down in tears when she answered the door and she didn't ask any questions and just held me while I cried my eyes out. She whispered that whatever it was I was crying about, we would get through it together. After I had calmed down, I kept asking myself if I should have talked to Brad instead of leaving. Was I wrong for just uh, leaving without even talking to him? Let me know. Anyways, I'll be back if I update this or something. Update number two. Why, uh, you know, why? You would think that things could not get any worse, but life always has a way of showing you that you don't have control of it. And that's exactly what happened to me since my last update just a few days ago. I had been at my best friend's place for a couple of days, and I eventually told her about Brad stealing and selling my mother's jewelry. She shook her head, but she did not look shocked. She told me that she had always known that Brad was such a loser and a leech. She wasn't lying. Both she and my mother had always warned me about Brad and his shady behavior, but I never listened. I then told her that my mother-in-law was the one who had orchestrated the whole thing. She sighed and told me that she was not surprised because of how manipulative he was. She then proceeded to tell me that my mother had warned me about Brad and his evil mom. I kept quiet because there was nothing that I could say. I could not defend Brad this time. He crossed the line and I asked Janice if I could stay with her for a while just until I figure a few things out. She tells me that I could stay for as long as I need. When uh, we then drove to my place, just so I could fetch a few things, I was relieved to see that Brad's car was not in the driveway, meaning that he was probably out with his mother. We entered the house and it was almost empty, except for the furniture and appliances and Brad and Claudia's stuff were gone, like they were never here. I immediately tried calling them both, but their numbers were disconnected. We then heard footsteps. We turned around and it was the same shady man that I had seen a couple of nights ago, but this time he was not alone. He had two muscular men with him. He told us that he was here to get all of uh, the stuff that Brad owed to him. He explained that Brad was one of his loyal clients and, well, he had been borrowing money from him for years. Janice asked if he was a debt collector. He smirked and told us that he was even better than a debt collector. I felt chills when he said that. He then exposed that Brad was owing him a lot of money and that he had been avoiding him for the last couple of months. I asked him how much Brad possibly owed him. He took out his cell phone and showed me their conversation. He also showed me the amounts that Brad had paid off so far. I was in so much disbelief, but the evidence was right there. He had all of Brad's information, even his identity number. Well, honestly, I could not believe that I was reading and seeing this. Brad had not borrowed your typical 50 bucks. Heck, he didn't even borrow a few hundred. He had borrowed over $20,000. I noticed that one of the proofs of payment documents had my account details. I almost fainted on the spot. This explained why I received the message last night, you know. It was pretty obvious. Brad had made a large transaction through my banking app. How on earth did he get through my phone? I must have married a fraudulent man. A fraud with a serious money problem. I asked if Brad had given him any jewelry. He shook his head and told me that Brad had shown him some jewelry that he was going to sell to cover his debt, but he never made the payment. He then proceeded to tell me that since Brad was missing in action, as his wife and I had to pay off his debts, and that if I did not, then there would be hell to pay. They walked out and immediately I called my bank. 
I also called my boss and let her know that I simply wasn't coming in today. Oh, I could not work in the state that I was in, especially after I found out that Brad had been using our emergency credit card at the casino. It was clear as night and day. Brad had a gambling problem and I was devastated. I couldn't believe it. To make matters even worse, I then also found out that Brad had taken out fraudulent loans in my name. He had forged my signature on multiple agreements. So it looked like I and he were both in debt and I had to try to figure out what I was going to do to settle all this. My working salary is not going to cover half of the debt Brad owed the loan shark. I've absolutely no access to my mother's estate. Well, because the lawyer told me that it would take a while for the money to be transferred to my account. I also know that it's too dangerous to involve my family in this, but there's one thing that I'm sure of. I'm not going to let Brad get away with any of this. I just don't know how to make him pay. Do you guys possibly have any suggestions about it? Update number three. Hey guys, well, I'm back. So, you know, the last couple of weeks have been an absolute hell. Brad and Claudia, well, <laughs> are absolutely nowhere to be found. It's like they just up and vanished into thin air. Well, this loan shark guy has been doing nothing more than harassing and threatening me and anyone close to me. Janice is trying her best to help me out with everything, but there's only so much that she can do without getting into trouble for using police resources. The last straw was when my boss called me to inform me that she had no choice but to fire me because the loan shark had threatened one of my clients and he was making everybody extremely uncomfortable. That's when I lost my mind because my career, it was everything to me. Now, Brad had even ruined that for me? I tried talking to my mother's attorney, but he told me that there was a certain clause that he has to follow before the money can be transferred. I couldn't really understand what was going on with my mother's estate or her attorney. Something wasn't adding up. I just could not put my finger on it. But all I knew was that without my monthly salary from work, I was not going to be able to do anything, especially with Brad's loan shark harassing me and watching my every step. Finally, I got the courage and went to Janice's workplace and told her that I wanted to open a case against Brad. Her face lit up like a Christmas tree. She'd been waiting for me to say those words, and I was tired of protecting Brad, if I'm being completely honest with you. I didn't even understand why I was protecting him. I mean, he literally has ruined my life, and he even proved that I was not important or a priority to him. Janice was able to freely use her police resources to help me with getting into the trouble I needed because I had opened a case and filed charges against both Brad and Claudia. So, more weeks have passed and we were still unable to track down Brad and Claudia. The loan shark was becoming extremely difficult to the point he was literally everywhere I was. While talking to Janice, I mentioned how I was still paying for the tracker on Brad's car. She told me to call the tracking company immediately because it was still on then. We could be able to track them down through the tracker. I called the tracking company and since the car was under my name, they were actually able to pass me on the location. As we were about to leave, the loan shark stopped me and told us that he was tired of waiting and that he wants his money. He starts to make all these threats to me. It was bad, but I just looked at him and told him I knew where Brad was and that he could come with us. See, the tracker, it showed that Brad's location was two hours away. So now we're on the way to the location, a little road trip, and I'm pretty nervous about what might happen next. Anyways, just wish me luck, guys, please. Update number four. It's been just over a week since we caught Brad and his mom. Whatever happened there, it all felt like a scene from a crime investigation show. So, the tracker led us to some shady motel. The loan shark immediately spotted Brad, who was wearing a disguise, and called after him. Brad ran as soon as he saw us. I then spotted Claudia, who was confused about the commotion. She looked in our direction and gasped in shock before attempting to run away, but Janice caught up with her. Janice searched them and found a fake identity document on them. The documents had fake names, fake identity security numbers, and it was clear that they had started a new life in this city. 
Janice handcuffed them while they complained. Claudia told her that they had rights and they wanted a lawyer as if they could afford such. I asked Janice to record everything that was about to happen and she agreed. I looked Brad straight into the eyes and asked him why he had done this to all of us. He looked down like he was guilty and then shamed. Claudia, scared of her chances in prison, ended up being the one to confess to everything. She confessed that she thought that Brad had hit the jackpot when he started dating me because of how well known my family was. She admitted that the only reason she had liked me at the beginning of our relationship was because of my wealthy background. Then she admitted that she stopped liking me when she realized how stingy and selfish I was. Well, I looked at Brad. He could not even look at me. I told him that we could make a deal and I knew how gullible and naive Brad could be and I used that to my absolute advantage. Claudia tried her best to intervene and told Brad to not agree to anything. I won his trust by mentioning that Janice would record me promising to not press any charges against him and that I would help him pay off his debt only if he tells me the truth. Janice looked uneasy with that and what I was saying but thankfully she just went with it. The man confessed everything. He admitted that he had gambling problems and that he would gamble every weekend and that sometimes he would miss work to go gambling, something his boss wasn't aware of because he would lie and say that he was going to take my mother to a doctor appointment to help her out. I was disgusted by that. You know, using my mother's illness as a way to gamble instead of work... He also admitted to taking out loans in my name by faking my signature and accessing my banking account without my knowledge. He explained that he had changed the notification settings on my phone while my mother was sick because he had noticed how in inattentive and distracted I was. I felt like vomiting after hearing that. This was the man I married, huh? Really? It was crystal clear that I had no idea who I married. However, I was pretty shocked that he was easily confessing everything. It showed me how desperate he was. Janice then stopped recording. I asked him where was my mother's jewelry since he had not given it to the loan shark. He told me that he sold it and was using the money that he and Claudia were using to survive while they were hiding out. Guys, I'm not going to lie. It hurt to hear that there was no way of me getting back the jewelry because he had sold it to the first person who was willing to buy it. It felt like I had lost a part of my mother that I simply could not get back. I told Brad and Claudia that they were going to rot in jail because I was not going to drop the case against them. This was going to be their karma as much as there's a saying that states you should not create people's, you know, karma. I don't know. I just felt that in my case, it was absolutely valid. Brad begged me to not send him to jail and that he could still work things out. Claudia, on the other hand, was throwing all sorts of insults my way, but I did not care. While we were driving back, I posted Brad's confession all over my social media so that people could see what kind of man I married. I knew this might not um, fully save my reputation, um, but at least uh, people would see that I was dealing with this. I won't lie, it felt good to have gotten a bit of revenge on them. I didn't even feel an ounce of guilt for exposing them. I mean, would you have felt guilty? Let me know. Update number five. Hey guys, a couple of months have passed uh, since the awful ordeal and I thought I should provide you guys with some closure to the story. Unfortunately, life was never the same after all that drama. Yes, the video worked to ruin their lives and just simply tarnish their reputation, but it also, <laughs> uh, you know, it also exposed me, not in a negative way, but it still exposed my private life. So, Brad and Claudia are in jail awaiting their fraud trial. However, Claudia was only being charged with an accomplice, while Brad was being charged as the mastermind, even though we all knew who was the real mastermind. Janice has been keeping me updated since I moved far, far away from that town. I just couldn't stay there, not with everything that happened. I found out there was a hidden clause in my mother's will that only the attorney was allowed to see. My mother had asked that none of her money should be transferred into my account until I divorced Brad. Turns out my mother had known about Brad's little gambling addiction and knowing how in love I was with him, she knew that I was going to believe her or leave him. Never! 
I guess she knew in her heart that I would one day divorce him. I wonder what would happen if I never divorced him, though. Anyways, I'm now living in a new town, enjoying every moment of it, and I've also decided to change careers, because I just didn't want to do anything attached to my old life. So I opened up to my own hair salon, and things have been going pretty well. The loan shark decided to just say, hey, he's gonna cut his losses because he knew that with Brad in jail for fraud, he was never going to get the money back. And he wasn't going to ask me to pay it off because he knew that I was the victim in all this. I sometimes ask myself, what would have happened if I had just agreed to sell my mother's jewelry from the start? Anyways, that's not my concern now, is it? Goodbye. Thank you, guys.